Hey guys, Colby with Muffler Tech, PriusCats.com and StolenCats.com. Today's video is going to be about my kind of mistake about not being able to drive Gen 3 Prius if your catalytic converter is stolen to get it to a repair shop. Now let's quickly cover what's happening in the Toyota world, at least with stolen cats. The Generation 3 cars kind of taking over as the leader as far as cats being stolen. Uh, we're still seeing the uh, Gen 2s with a fair amount, uh, but the Gen 3s are starting to come in a lot more prevalently. And uh, I want to talk quickly about some of the differences just so we can all kind of tell uh, really quickly. I mean, most Priuses kind of look the same to most people, but uh, the headlights are different on a Gen 3. That's one of the easier ways to determine um, the difference between a Gen 3 and a Gen 2. So a Gen 2 is going to have more of a kind of an elongated uh, headlight that runs up the fender, whereas the Gen 3 has kind of a cornered off section where the fender comes into the headlight and has that top kind of angled piece. And then the taillights are different as well. Uh, you can see on the Gen 2 cars, uh, the taillight is kind of underneath the rear spoiler piece, and on the Gen 3 car, the taillight runs up and kind of finishes off into the spoiler piece. That's how I can tell the difference really quickly. There's a lot of other things like the wheels and, and uh, other items, and the interior is quite a bit different. But uh, if you have a Gen 3 Prius, you should be very aware these cars are uh, a very, very high target. The biggest difference between the two generations, though, is going to be what we have on screen now, and that's going to be the catalytic converter assemblies. The one that's a little bit further away from us is for a Generation 2, and you can see how much more simplistic it is. We have a flange that bolts up to the, uh, to the exhaust manifold here, and then we have a short section of pipe. We go into the first catalytic converter, that's this one here, comes back and has the exhaust pipe section in between that and the secondary cat. And this is the O2 sensor fitting here, the O2 bung. Uh, then it runs back, another exhaust pipe section here. This is a resonator, uh, pre-muffler, for lack of a better description. And uh, then we have an exhaust pipe that runs back. and has a flange here that bolts up to the muffler assembly. goes kind of underneath the, uh, the rear storage area, the hatch of the car. Now, coming around to the Generation 3 part, Similar flange here that bolts up to the exhaust manifold. A lot more heat shielding, but there is a cat that sits under there, very similar to that one there. And then as we move back, we have the second cat here, which is a little bit closer to the first cat. Um, and if we come around this side, you can see the O2 sensor bung sits there, so similar in location as far as being in between the two cats to the Gen 2. And then we have the secondary cat here, and that's where it starts to change. So we get back here and we do have a resonator, which is this section from here to there on the Gen 3, but in front of the resonator in this welded section, and I have another video where we cut one of these open so you can see what's inside of these, but essentially there's a valve that opens and closes inside of here that's controlled by this device here. There's a little ram that opens and closes the valve. But the biggest thing here is and this is why when I made a video before, and I'm admitting to my potential mistake, uh, is the coolant line. So there's a coolant line here and a coolant line here. Now, one of the mistakes that I made was I told people that this was to um, cool the cat down. That's, that's actually not accurate. What, what it was designed to do is help heat the coolant up faster uh, so the heater can work sooner and the engine gets to a warmer temp sooner. But the bottom line is, the thieves don't want anything other than these two cats, cat here, cat here, just like on the Gen 2 next to us there. The cats are what's worth the money, that's where the precious metals are. The flange, the O2 sensors, the resonator, this, this coolant bank, all that stuff has no value uh, to anybody trying to take these. What they want is they want the precious metals out of the two cats that are here and here. And early on when we started getting Gen 3s, what we saw was they were cutting it in different places. They weren't sure if this was a cat and they were cutting here. Uh, sometimes they were cutting back there. But when that happened, what they were doing is they were cutting these lines. And these are lines that go directly into the cooling system of the vehicle. And so if those are penetrated, we'll have an opening in the cooling system and that makes the car undrivable. You do not want to drive a vehicle where it's leaking any of its coolant 
uh, the vehicle then overheat and you can blow up the engine. What we're finding though is, is as we're getting more and more of these Gen 3s, sometimes three, four, five, or six a day, is the thieves have gotten smart. And they figured out if they cut it right here and they leave these lines intact, they cut it here and then they unbolt it from the manifold up here. And then they take this, they cut the wires to the O2 sensor on the other side and these coolant lines and this coolant bank of sorts here all stays intact on the car and the car is still drivable. Now I'm gonna show you what that looks like on the yellow car that I started the video with so you can see it from underneath. But that's a quick description and also the differences between a, a Gen 2 and a Gen 3 cat assembly. So on this car, I'm gonna show you an example of one that you don't want to drive. What you can see here is up there on the top, this is where they unbolt it from the manifold. That's where I was talking about where that flange bolts up. Those are the two bolt holes there and there. And then in the back here, you can see where they cut the pipe. Now, that is clearly a Sawzall cut. You can tell by the angle and and uh, how it was cut here and, and the way that the burr, the burring here is left on the pipe right here. That's not a pipe cutter, that is a Sawzall, which is what we're seeing most, most of the time now when these cats are getting stolen. Um, and this is what I was talking about. These are those coolant lines. So uh, one of these is the feed and one is the return. And because somebody had taken the assembly in between the bolt up area there and where it was cut here, um, in other words, that resonator section would sit right here. Um, and then they have that coolant bank right here. And then those are those cut lines. Now, if you were to drive this car, uh, once it warms up and the thermostat opens, it's gonna just push all its coolant out onto the ground and the vehicle won't have any more coolant and the engine will overheat. Now, this one just showed up on the tow truck and we're gonna show you how they're typically being stolen now and why you can still operate the car to get it to a repair shop. All right, so we're gonna walk underneath this car now and show you uh, why you can drive this one. Now you can see what we were showing you on that, uh, that cat that I had on the floor of the new unit. So here's the resonator piece and then here's that coolant bank. Here's the valve that opens and closes. Um, and here are the coolant lines. Here's one here and one up there, still attached, still intact. Uh, this rear unit is still fully operational. And as long as all of this is still on the car after your theft, it allows the vehicle to be driven without any damage. Now you can see the cat is still missing. This is where they unbolted up here. Those are those two bolts I was showing you before. Here is the cut wire for the O2 sensor that would go into the pipe right here. And you can see where they made the cut on the pipe right before this, this coolant bank piece here, resonator. Um, so the cat obviously is gone, it's missing. And uh, this allows the car to be driven. Like I said, I was I, my original video I made on the Gen 3 was when the theft started on these this particular year range early on. And uh, they were often cutting into this section like I showed you on that car previously. Um, but this is typically how we're seeing them getting stolen now. And uh, my assumption is that these, again, they don't want any of this stuff. And if they leave all of these intact here, they don't have to worry about getting covered in coolant when they go to cut it out. So if this is the way your car looks, you can drive it to the repair shop. Well, there you have it, guys. If you have any year Prius, you should be aware of the prevalence in which these cars are being targeted for theft around their catalytic converter. This video, of course, is, is very specific to the 2010 to 2015 Generation 3 cars. They're the only cars that have the coolant lines that run through the cat itself. And I wanna make sure everybody is very aware of if those coolant lines are cut, you absolutely should not drive these cars. Uh, if the coolant lines are not cut, then driving it to a repair shop is something you can do without doing any damage to the car. Now, it's very important for everybody to understand that I am not advocating the use of any of these vehicles with no catalytic converter on them. That would be illegal, it's bad for the environment, you can get fumes inside the car, and of course, the vehicle is very loud, uh, which is an inconsiderate way to operate a vehicle in public areas of such. Um, the bottom line is, a lot of people don't have insurance to cover this repair. And if you don't have the insurance, 
then a tow is an added expense to get it to your repair shop of choice. And so the illustration and or idea behind my suggestion of being able to drive these cars with no catalytic converter is simply to save you money. Now, uh, driving without a converter in a lot of situations besides what I've already mentioned is not safe. Uh, if, if you're um, driving off road and there's dry grass, things like that can cause a fire. So be very aware of what you're doing around the operation of a Prius with no catalytic converter and take responsibility for, for doing what you're doing. Um, if you have insurance, this is really important and a lot of people still go, well, I'll just drive at the shop or, or do whatever I can. Your insurance, your comprehensive coverage pays, has to pay for a tow to the repair facility of your choice. And so there's really no need to drive the vehicle. Find the shop that you'd like to do it. Of course, we're available uh, if logistically you're able to get that car uh, to us. We can, we can repair it for you. We can handle all that. You just need to give us a call at uh, this phone number here and uh, we will arrange a tow and get the vehicle down to us. If you're somewhere else in the country or on the globe where muffler tech's not close to you, um, again, your comprehensive insurance uh, will cover the tow to the repair shop of choice. And finally, uh, I've said it now a few times, it is very important for you to understand if you have insurance, it is 100% your choice of where that vehicle gets repaired. Now, you may call uh, to make a claim and they may say, okay, well, these are the shops we work with and kind of... Uh, they may insinuate that you need to go to the shops that they work with. You absolutely do not. It is uh, your choice uh, uh, as, as far as what facility, what, what repair organization um, does the work on your car. It is your car and your choice who does the repair. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'd love a subscribe and a like. Uh, if there's something you don't like, put it down in the comments. I'm, I'm open for criticism, as always. Uh, um, keep watching. And be careful out there. Catalytic converters are expensive, and we're doing the best we can to help you, help you avoid running into these situations. Have a nice day.